When Jocelyn has a seizure, what happened was an area of her brain decided to generate abnormal electrical activity. And that electrical activity spread across her brain and then disrupted the normal behavior and activity of her brain. Either you lose function that you're supposed to have, such as uh, consciousness, or you have abnormal neurological symptoms, such as movement, uh, abnormal behavior, and so on. When Jocelyn came to us, she just got diagnosed with intractable epilepsy um, associated with hemimegalencephaly. One half of the brain grew much bigger, has much more neurons than is necessary, and as a result, she was having almost daily seizures. The operation I like to do is something called a modified functional hemispherectomy, and it's a big deal. You know, you're going to remove effectively, either anatomically or functionally, remove half of someone's brain. We were very scared, uh, very unsure of what she would be like when she came out of the surgery. We were worried that she might lose personality or um, not make a, a good recovery from it. Um, but at the same time, we were desperate there really weren't a lot of other options. You know, I can't imagine being in the position of Mrs. Dempsey or the other parents of patients that we say, hey, you know, if you let us take some of your child's brain out, we can really make things better. That's kind of, it's a, it's a conversation nobody wants to have. But, um, you know, it does work. And the alternative is, you know, 1% per year of death. And then, you know, the trajectory for near normal development is pretty much obliterated. I, I really think that you're painted in a pretty tight corner. Uh, and to have the courage to be able to make that decision early in the game has great benefits for your child, provided the surgical team can get things done properly. After the first surgery, I believe that uh, we, we felt very good. Um, Dr. Bongatna and I you know, felt this was complete surgery. It should be good. Um, but not so much. After uh, uh, several days, the mother noticed that uh, she was having very subtle seizures. She was still seizing after the second redo surgery, and we weren't sure where the seizures were originating from, and there was a question that they might be coming from her right hemisphere, which was the good hemisphere. Which was a huge, huge disappointment for everybody, because the assumption <clears throat> somehow hemispectomy will help is that the other hemisphere will function and recover her function um, as she grows older. When you've gone to the, the level of getting people to, to buy off on this hemispherectomy as an intervention and when you don't execute it ad adequately, it's, you know, you don't need to be humble, you get humbled. We were confident in what we were doing, but we knew at the same time, just, you know, from looking at her, we had to do more and we took her back. We found a game literally this much. It was like less than 0.5 centimeter tissue that was still firing and then that was, I believe, the last surgery. Usually, after six months for hemispectomy, we feel good. And uh, after a year, we feel great. She has been seizure-free for a year now. So we just had a celebration with cupcakes and everything. Seeing her take her first steps, um, we doubted at certain points that that was ever going to happen. So those really big milestones are just, it's a miracle for us. It's just so remarkable, much more than any of my other children uh, before. It's just amazing. She's going to really develop much, much better. In 15 years or so, I think she's going to be in college. I hope so, and I expect that.